Today, guys, we're joined uh, with uh, head coach of Eastern Michigan football, Chris Creighton. We also have uh, a guy I've worked with before, uh, their offensive GA, Nick Miller. Uh, I just want to start by saying thanks to having uh, both you guys for joining us. Appreciate it. No, thanks for having us, talking. Tim. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, the one thing I find unique about both you guys, uh, you're two guys uh, who, whose careers started in Division Three football, right? Both you guys have played Division Three football. Uh, both your coaching careers uh, started early on at the Division Three level. We'll start with Nick, and then we'll get to you, Coach. Uh, how have those roots sort of prepared you and got you ready for, for uh, life at Division One football? Yeah, so I think uh, a couple things kind of go into that. But first off, at, at the Division Three level, you got to wear a, a ton of different hats. Whereas here at Eastern Michigan, we have a, we have a video coordinator. Uh, we have a director of player personnel, but those things that Division Three are all dealt with, um, the position coaches, the, the coordinators, the head coach, and, and the young guys on staff. So with you wearing different hats, you get a ton of opportunities and experiences as a younger coach, which I got an opportunity to work with the, uh, the running back group um, as a young coach, and it just was so valuable for me and, and helped me develop as a coach. And I kind of transitioned from player on the same team to uh, to coach, which was honestly a, a tough transition for me. I think it's tough for a lot of guys when you're transitioning within the same program. Um, but there's certain sacrifices that that I made um, to try to turn the light on me as a not a, a player anymore, but a coach. So like things like waking up early on a on a weekend and you're driving to a, a summer camp while your buddies are out golfing or or on the beach and. Just by making those some of those sacrifices, guys have a, a better a better trust for you and a better understanding for you as as more of a coach. And um, for me at, at the Division Three level at, at Whitewater and uh, the other place I worked, it's it helped me become a a GA that was ready to to, to GA at the Division One level at, at Eastern Michigan. So working um, longer hours and, and doing some of the the work that Connor talked about a couple episodes prior, but um, those type of experiences really helped me to, to be successful here at, at Eastern Michigan. Coach? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I first want to say that, that Nick Miller um, is, is not a better coach all of a sudden because he's coaching at Division I um, than he was coaching at Division Three. Th there are differences, um, but it, it's not better. I want to make that you know, crystal clear, um, you know, from, from coach, I'm a small college coach. I always will be. And, and I think that, you know, a, a lot of people, and I think it's be just because of how we are in society, you know, think that bigger is better or whatnot. And I wholeheartedly just don't believe that. Um, I think they're different. So when you, when you ask the question, how did it get me ready? Um, you know, I, it'd be just like if I was a Division One coach and I was going to go coach Division Three. How did Division One get me ready to coach Division Three? They're, they're very different um, in, in a lot of ways. And then some things, I mean, there's 11 guys on either side of the ball. That doesn't change. Um, so, uh, and, and Nick did, did touch on it some. I think, you know, at, at Ottawa University, which was NAIA, my first job, um, we had three full-time coaches. Um, and then our staff was made up of those three-time coaches, full-time coaches, and, and part-time coaches. So at a staff meeting, there would be three of us, <laughs> you know, or, uh, and, and we were running everything. Um, and so, you know, and then at 3 o'clock when people got off work, you know, we'd go from 3 to 7, um, and then we'd have a full staff. So, um, and I love that. I mean, I absolutely loved it. How did it get me ready? Well, like, like Nick said, I mean, we were in charge of everything. I had my own recruiting territory. You know, at times I was the strength and conditioning coordinator. Um, you know, I was the liaison to admissions, um, whatever it was. And so now we have people at a morning staff meeting, we have 21, 23 people sitting around the table. And I think it, it got me ready, if you ask it that way, um, because I have been – I have dealt with strength and conditioning. I have dealt with being on the ground recruiting. You know, I have been uh, the main liaison with admissions. I, I was the promoter or the marketer 
of our program. Um, you know, we didn't have a development staff at those schools for our football program. So, um, but I want to stress that they're just different and not better or worse, more so than, than getting ready for. Um, you know, going, going from whatever, seven people, you know, sitting around the table to 23, I, I don't know how nothing gets you ready for that uh, uh, other, than, other than jumping into it. Sure. So, good question. Awesome answers from both of you there. Coach, I'll, I'll pivot to you. You know, you took over a program at Eastern. Uh, when you got there, they hadn't been to a bowl game in, in 25 years. Um, what did you do in those early years uh, to change the culture at Eastern Michigan? Yeah, you know, off, get, get that asked often. Um, and in some ways, it's still a whirlwind. Uh, we're definitely still in it. And so when people say change the culture, I quickly, it's changing, right? We're always evolving and changing and getting better. Um, there is no past tense. I think that's critically important. Um, but, you know, I think I took a little bit of a different approach. And I think that you could argue it was the wrong approach. Um, I, I wouldn't change it uh, if I did it all over again. But um, listen, there was really good people, both uh, on the staff and uh, on the team here when I first took over. But I will tell you, um, and this is this is their words as much as it is mine. You know, it was a a, a, um, a hurting, if not a broken, time. I mean, it just you know, any, any program that's gone through you know um, a player dying during the season, uh, that's tough. Uh, to deal with. And, and obviously there wasn't a, a ton of success winning games on Saturdays and, and that the staff got let go. I mean, there's just, so any program is going to be, you know, hurting puppies uh, in that situation. And so, you know, what I did, I knew that I was supposed to come to Eastern Michigan. It was, it was crystal clear to my wife and I, we fortunately had about a three week time span to figure out, you know, instead of just this kind of wham, bam, you know, airplane or airport meeting room and never visit the place. And all of a sudden you're making this life changing decision. And it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that at all. So we, we had time to, uh, really for me to seek the Lord's guidance on whether it was something that we we're supposed to do or not. And when that became clear, uh, you know, that's a game changer, you know, it's then, then it's not, you know, you're not putting your toes in, you're not wondering. I mean, you're just all in from the get go. And uh, so in the first meeting with our team, right before the, the press conference, I wouldn't even meet with the team. And I just said, I'm not doing a press conference before I meet the team. And so they acquiesced. And, and uh, I told the team that, that I loved them and I'd never met them before. Um, and I told them that uh, uh, we were supposed to be here and that we wanted to be here. And, and this was the decision, I think, that might be a little bit different is we said, look, we're going to meet you where you're at. And uh, we're going to meet you where you're at. We're going to figure out where that is. And then we're going to start closing the gap. Um, and we're going to go through that process together. Um, again, I think that that can be criticized uh, fairly. Um, been pretty simple to come in and say, hey, look, uh, you know, this has not worked. Uh, so adios, you know, we're, we're starting over. Um and, and go that way. And maybe that would have been quicker. I don't know. But um, we did. We, we, uh, we had very few people leave. We met guys where they were at. And, um, and we started closing the gap. And, and so maybe the process took longer. I don't know. But I, I wouldn't do it any differently. We were not a very, very good football team on Saturdays that first fall or even that second fall. But we weren't a broken program. And, uh, you know, as coaches know, you know, you can look at the scores and, and people can throw stones and all of that. And really the only measuring stick uh, other than a website or a conversation is, you know, is the outcome during the fall. But we were absolutely building relationships with our guys, building team um, throughout those two years. And, and we were building a foundation. Um, and, and I believe that the relationships and, and, Choosing to, to love the guys, um, uh, you know, was the way that, that we started all of that. Um, 
So that's what endured, you know, two seasons of, you know, futility on, on Saturday afternoons. Um, and the other way that I would answer that, so that's what we did with the team. And then from the get-go, the solution to me was hiring great people and recruiting great people. And, and, and pause, like great people. Like great people means coaches, they've got to be experts at what they're doing, but they've got to be great people. And, and, and what does that mean? I mean, that means that they've got to love the guys that they're coaching and they've got to jump in and be all in into what we're doing. And I've got to know that when they're sitting in the living room of a, of a kid's home, that like, I would just be proud of who that coach is, what he stands for, his integrity, his character. And when you bump into a coach at a grocery store, you're like, God, God man, that guy's coaching at Eastern. That was a great guy, you know, whatever that means. But I wanted great people. And then we were going to great, we were going to recruit great people pause who are talented and passionate but still great people and i think that we all talk about that and, and uh you know maybe we've made compromises i sure hope that we haven't but you know when guys really run fast and jump really high and 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 make plays i mean it's really tempting and a, and a good kid can become great pretty easily in your mind but um we've we've really tried hard to to just stick with it's got to be a guy that, that I like and trust, you know, uh, maybe because I'm old, fat, and gray now, but I want to enjoy what I'm doing. I don't want to have to wonder and worry about, you know, if the chief of police is going to call me at, at midnight on Saturday night. And we're, we're far from perfect, you know, and that starts with me. But I'll tell you, I do. I love and trust our guys. Um, and so that just changes the dynamic. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, and it's allowed us to – endure uh you know some some really tough uh times whether it was getting our brains getting beat in the first two seasons or you know being in the fight the last four years and and uh you know winning some and and, and losing some that's awesome uh i'll pivot back to you nick uh, you're in your first year in the program mm -hmm. um <clears throat> how have you created value um it's it, i think it's always difficult and i think back to when i was a young coach it's always difficult as a young coach, you know, specifically, like when, when you talk up in a, in a meeting um, it, or show, you know, that you're competent in this area or that area. How, do you, how have you created value for yourself in your first year uh, at Eastern Michigan? Yeah, as far as the, the input, I think Coach Creighton does an awesome job creating a, a culture and an environment where guys aren't afraid to speak up or, or talk about the, their ideas. He, he encourages, he, got, he wants to hear ideas. Um, so I think there's kind of a fine line as a, as a younger coach, especially when you're coming in and, and you're brand new. There can be a, a little bit of a, a curve there where it's, hey, I'm, I'm here, I'm listening, I'm learning, and I'm still, I'm still there in that phase and kind of um, moving to the creating value where, where I get my input is I work um, very closely with Coach Page, our wide receivers coach, and him and I have an, an awesome relationship. So if I have an idea or something um, – that that I think is can help us I, I usually go to him and, and talk with him so I think it's important to know that it's not it's not me going to coach Creighton as the head coach and say hey I got an idea of, of what we can do like there's definitely a, a kind of a, a hierarchy there where um, I have a really great relationship with coach Page and um, he, he encourages me to bring ideas to him as well so um, and kind of more adding more value uh, as far as for my for me and my role is making sure I can talk about the uh, the defense for uh, the opponent we're going to see and making sure I, I'm working with the scout guys closely and making sure we're getting the right looks the right techniques um, and, and that's always the guys who've worked with with scout team can be a challenge at times but um, we just really try to keep pushing our guys and uh, making sure they're they're doing the right things and then kind of one my one word. Um, which Coach Creighton um, asked us all to do is is develop. And for me, where my value comes in is we have nine guys coming into the program at wide receiver uh, coming up in this this summer. And it's my role as as a GA uh, to make sure that those guys are are ready to go. So throughout practices and throughout um, our meeting times is is making sure that those young guys are are getting up to speed and. Um, especially during, during practice, Coach Page uh, sometimes will give me half the group of the, the young guys and 
we're going to slow things down for them and, and really focus on the, the fundamentals. Um, and then the, the last part of that, of, of adding value, is, is in recruiting. And I was fortunate enough um, that I got to go on the road recruiting a little bit this winter with us trying to hire new full-time coaches. And, uh, that's something that I took a great deal of pride in and didn't take lightly. It's a, it's a big step. Coach just mentioned uh, about hiring uh, great people, and he expects when guys are in the um, – in the living room that, that they're doing the right things. And now I wasn't in the, their living room by any means, but um, just going to the schools and, and talk with coaches. That's, that's something where, where I took a, a like I said, a great deal of pride in, in something that um, was an awesome ex- experience for me and, and really helped me develop as a coach. And hopefully I created value to the program with um, getting kids from, from schools in front of our, our other position coaches so they can see them. Um, so that's really kind of, um, where the value comes in for me and just kind of transition a little bit and talking about coach Creighton and, and his leadership is he, mm-hmm. he knows, he knows his strengths. And, um, he, we, we talk about leadership as, as influence in our program. And, um, I, I think one of our greatest strengths as a team is we know exactly who we are and coach Creighton knows exactly who he is. He's a, a tough guy, a, a competitor. And, and that's what our team emulates on Saturdays. And I think that's the, um, as the, as the head coach, the team kind of takes the, the personality of the, the head coach, and, and our team definitely does that. We know exactly who we are, and Coach Crane's a, a man of extremely high character, and he challenges us as coaches and challenges our guys, which is which is awesome. And he challenges us to hold the, the standard and, and uphold the standard and, and make sure we're doing things the right way. So um, I'm very appreciative of, of Coach Creighton, and I got to work closely with him through um, – with the, the new transition in, in our offense, and it's been it's been awesome. Awesome, and Nick, you sort of touched on how I wanted to wrap this this thing up, and this is sort of this will be a question for both of you, um, and it's a it's a two part question. Um, what do you guys do in your program throughout the year to develop leaders, and how do you differentiate teaching a freshman and a senior about leaders being about leadership? Excuse me. And uh, I don't know, Nick, you start. Uh, well, I'll kind of turn this one over to the coach. It's, um, our leadership program, I think, is something that's that's been awesome being a, a new guy, and, and he's had a ton of experience with it. So I'll let uh, Coach talk about, about this one. Awesome. All right. So, hey, Tim, if I can just go back in terms of the creating value. I mean, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking to coaches, and so I, I shouldn't have to convince anybody of this. But sometimes uh, it, it's just a really good reminder, okay? Whitewater, you guys are pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and so how important is your uh, relationship um, with admissions? It's important. I mean, we're, we're in constant conversation, I think, uh, uh, throughout the recruiting process to make sure, uh, you know, on the front end of the process, getting, getting guys to get their stuff in on time and then on the back end, um, keeping them updated on where they're at. I, I, I'd say it's really important, right? Right. Every single one of your all-conference guys right now were admitted to school there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then how important is financial aid? Uh, it's very important. Obviously, with Division three non-scholarship, we got to uh, compete against uh, scholarship programs for the best players, and uh, it's, it's, it's extremely important. Extremely important. And then – you guys just take the, the nine months off out, out of season, right, and, 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 and don't train. I mean, so you're off-season program, your strength coaches and all that. How important is that? Like on a scale of one to ten? Uh, Coach Munger right now is is maybe one of the best in the country, I think, with how he's prepared our guys uh, for this uh, situation we're in and what he's done since uh, we've got in this situation, uh, making different workouts. It's been, been amazing. So, yeah, what, four out of ten? Or I'd say maybe? ten out of ten. I mean, He's a ten, okay? He, he's a ten. Form. But now you guys don't use scout teams, from what I understand. You don't have enough players. <laughs> right? I wish so, that were the case. I'm in charge of the scout team, Coach. Okay, yeah. Yeah, darn right, right? So, uh, if, if you guys, your scout teams matter. Am I right? Correct. Yes, yeah. they do. They, they matter. And, right. and you're coaching tight ends. And uh, so, your, your, your tight ends matter, don't they? I like to think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they, they do. And so, you know, when you talk about creating value, okay, 
anybody involved in football understands that the concept of team and how everyone has a role and everyone matters. Um, it, any of us who don't get that should not be involved in what we're doing. Right. And so I don't care if there's a G or an A or an H or a C or an A or a C or an S and C, you know, or admissions or whatever it is in front of the title. Every single person has to do a great job. If in football, the most competitive reality in the world, in my opinion, is going to be successful, you know? And so anybody who thinks, oh, those guys are GAs or, hey, that's a tight ends coach or, hey, you know, scout team or, hey, you know, admissions or off season, uh, you're not going to be successful. Every single person matters. And that goes both ways. That means, you know, whatever role you're in, you better understand um, that it matters and you better do it at a high level. So I could say a lot of things about uh, about Nick and the ways that he's, uh, you know, brought value. As we were kind of reviewing, um, you know, our cut ups from last year and trying to come up with some some new ideas, I asked him to take notes. All right. And I didn't check daily or whatnot but when we were done with that he had 11 pages of typed up notes from everything that we had talked about and i may or may not have kissed him on the forehead you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, you know, I, I would have forgotten you know more than half of that stuff and so um you know just he, he does an awesome job the, the the deal with leadership um i i really believe that the the first question is you know do you believe or, or how, how much do you believe that it matters, you know? And so, and, and don't answer that, you know, flippantly. I mean, so what is it, you know, I mean, how many times have coaches made a list? I mean, so is it top three, you know, is it top five? Uh, is it top 10? You know, I mean, Hey, let's take on that 10 out of 10 strength coach. I mean, what's more important, the off season or, or senior leadership. What's more important, your run defense, you know, or or scoring points on offense. You know, what's more important, admissions, um, getting the right people in, recruiting in general, um, you know, or or talent. I mean, what's your list? You know, you better figure that out. I mean, you better figure out what you really believe matters. And back in 1997, when I was hired to be the head coach at Ottawa University, and I was writing on a Air, air, airplane napkin on the fold down deal, you know, my, my six, you know, um, characteristics or qualities that I thought a championship program had to have senior leadership was one of them. I just, I believe that. And so whatever we do in leadership development is going to be good because I believe that. I mean, in, in the core of my soul, I believe that if our 20 leaders want it as bad as our coaches do, if they want it and they take the ownership as bad as our coaches do, then all of a sudden that's going to infiltrate into the team and, and I'm going to coach again next year. I mean, I don't know where, you know, if they let me go, hopefully I'm going to, I'm going to coach somewhere, but those seniors, they're not playing again. Right. They're, they're definitely not playing college football again. And so they should even want it more than we do as coaches, you know, the seniors. And so, um, Man, I, I just believe in that. And so that's the first thing. You know, if it's if if it's number twenty seven on your list of things, don't even do don't don't do anything about it. Um, but if you believe that those twenty guys, those eleven guys, those twenty seven guys are fundamentally gonna dictate what kind of season you're gonna have, okay, well then shame on you if you don't do anything about it. You know, I mean as coaches, that's what we do. We figure out, you know, whatever it is that we need to do to make our program better, and we make it better. So, you know, I believe that uh, throwing a hitch on third and four, you know, is going to win or lose a game for us next year. And so we're going to talk about the split. We're going to talk about the stance. We're going to talk about where his eyes and where his hands are, you know, uh, what his pre-snap fundamentals are how many steps you want him to take, the yardage, uh, sink at his hips, his inside elbow coming back to the ball, what he's going to do on that last step, the self-fade, come back to the ball with his hands. I'm gonna, you know, We're going to film it. 
and we're going to critique it, and we're going to do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because there's going to be a certain four next year that's going to win or lose a ball game, And that, for us, for us, every win is whether we're bowl eligible or not. Right. Every single win. So I'm not saying this because I'm making it up. I really believe that we're going to throw a hit sometime next year that is going to dictate whether or not we go to a bowl game. And so we're going to coach the snot out of it. So even more than a hitch, I believe that senior leadership is going to dictate what kind of what kind of season that we're going to have. So we were on a four-game losing streak after going to a, our first bowl game. We beat Charlotte. We go to Rutgers, and we win. So and we're feeling pretty good. Then we lose four straight games, overtime games, going for two and not getting it games. And, and uh, we had a senior meeting like we do every Sunday during the season, and it was pretty quiet. I mean, we're 0-4, and I'm talking about last-second plays. And I was like, fellas, be real with me, man. I mean, are we about to break? Where are we at? You know, and it was quiet. And then Shaq Van, um, sitting in the back, basically said this. He said, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than four losses to break this team. And, again, I may or may not have gone to kiss him on the lips. <laughs> um, but that, that, to me, is more important than, okay, how are we going to run power um, against our next opponent? So that's the fundamental piece. Now, I know that you said that we probably need to be done with this about 10 or 15 minutes ago. <laughs> um, no, but, you're good. But Keep going, Coach. So stuff. If, you, if you believe in it, if you believe in it, then coach it. Yeah. Coach it. And, and I'm slow, you know. I mean, it took me four years to figure out that you, in my opinion, you can't create the senior leadership culture just by taking them over in January of their junior year, which is the beginning of their senior year, not senior season, but senior year in football. So when I got to Wabash, you know, that's when we spent about three months thinking through, oh, my gosh, we've been doing this with seniors for four years. It's been awesome. But, man, what are we doing? Why are we not starting this as freshmen? So, you, you know, you're talking about how, how does it all start? Well, I believe, after thinking about it for three months and reading a lot of books, that character, integrity being one of those character traits, it is the fundamental foundation of leadership. Now, who cares what I say and how I say it? And nobody likes to talk about character or, or, or anything like that. That's a fundamental, right? You need a sexier word. But I'll, I'll tell you this. You, you just think about, you know, any coach that you've worked with. You think you ask your underclassmen or even your seniors about reflect back on the seniors that they've had and guys that have gone up there and said, man, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. And you know when that senior's up there saying that, that he absolutely has not lived that way. He's not done those things. I mean, his leadership is done before it ever started. It's done. And so if you really do believe that, then you are going to realize that, okay, you know, what are some characteristics of leadership that we can all work on, you know, starting our freshman year, they're going to matter when I'm in those leadership opportunities. If you don't have integrity, you don't have a chance. I'm not going to go through them all, but now look, we all, we're all imperfect, but integrity doesn't mean, it doesn't mean perfect, but integrity means that you can trust that if someone's done something wrong, they're going to make it right. And so, I mean, it just starts with that, you know. Our second year of leadership is we call it big brother leadership where our, our second year guys, and it starts with our recruits, but they are linked up with a guy and they are investing in that person, getting to know them. That relationship starts before they get on campus. And then honestly, like I can die and go to heaven when, when some guy in five years in Eastern Michigan says, Man, I just want to let you know that my little brother stood up at my wedding. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, hopefully we've won a couple more games and maybe one bowl game before then. But if I die after that, I'm good. I'm good. Um, and, and, and so we, we put a lot into that. And then the guys who have two years left, we call it leadership skills. Um, but we go through a, a series of things where we're literally trying to prepare them for moments that are going to happen 
we're, we're going to be giving them the opportunity to lead the team. And, and each group has a, has a project or a challenge that they do. And so our two years left guys put on a team event in the summer and, and really it's, you know, uh, goals you can look at as pass or fail or just how far they've come. But it's hard. It's hard to get 100 people organized and for it to go well. And so, you know, uh, before they take over the team, uh, how'd you guys do? What, you had 60 guys out of 100 there? Is that a D minus? <laughs> right? I mean, so uh, quit, quit throwing stones. I mean, it's hard, isn't it? You know, um, influencing people, getting to do something, you know, is hard, but when you do it well, uh, and you've got a hundred guys there, and it was an unbelievable, you know, event. Um, how awesome was that? You know, and so that it, that matters. And then the seniors, look, we go through articles and we go through what is leadership, why is it important, where are we um, in relationship to the rest of the team, and where are we with each other, and then how do we lead, um, and go through multiple things throughout the year. Um, on that, but but really, we sit around the table just like we do as a staff, you know. And so we'll we'll talk about an article, we'll talk about a leadership principle. But basically, I'm going to say, you know, this. I'm meeting with them virtually on Friday. All right, uh, Friday at noon, I'm meeting with our seniors. And you know what I'm going to ask them? How's it going? What? I don't know what day of the week that is. What's Friday? Twenty-seventh. The twenty-seventh. It's going to be the last March twenty-seventh that they're ever going to have as a college football player. Coronavirus, virtual or not, it's the last one. Yeah. They don't get a redo. And so, how's it going? How's, is, is it going the way that you've always dreamed? And if not, then let's, let's fix it. And if so, let's keep making it better. You know? And so, I mean, that'll, that'll be the first 15 minutes of our meeting. Not me sitting there talking to them about some principal, you know, lean! Influence the team. Realize it's your last shot. Um, and uh, and so, you know, I think that's where it becomes real, you know, for our guys. Um, my job is to make them realize it's the last March 27th that they're ever going to have. Um, and to give them opportunities then to make their dreams uh, come true. So, um, yeah, I mean, anybody ever wants to talk about that stuff, I'd love to talk about it. Um Nobody, by the way, ever asks me about how to run a hitch. Uh, uh, you know, That'll be the next thought, a, Coach. Well, yeah, once a decade, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's about uh, what do you do leadership-wise. So great questions, um, and appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with you. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, uh, appreciate both of you guys coming on and taking this time and uh, trying to get coaches better. Thank you guys both very much. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Yeah, thanks a bunch. Appreciate it. Thank appreciate it. Uh -huh.